Hello, beloved. It's me, Robin. Robin Hallett, intuitive healer and light sparkler at robinhallett.com. And this is Tea with Robin, celebrating episode 100. Let us honor and receive all the beautiful journeying we have done together. Let us celebrate and call forth what it is we want to focus on now. We are calling in what is yet to be. Our inspiration is a beautiful timeline exercise, allowing ourselves to receive the bounty and beauty of our creations and fully appreciate everything we've been through, maybe for the first time. And we'll have a letter from hashtag portals on the principle of co-creation with the divine. Come grab a cup of yum yum and meet me here. Well, hello, gorgeous friend. It's me, Robin. Welcome back to the podcast, Tea with Robin. This is episode 100. (laughs) 100. This is episode 100. 100. Wow. Friends, I want to say a huge hello and thank you. You've been here listening and we've been walking together all this time. Some of you since episode one. We've been walking together all this time, and today I would like to celebrate our journey by honoring the journey. I'd like to talk about how freaking amazing we are. We. We are. And I hope that it's going to be wonderful and beautiful for us both and supportive and just thank you thank you thank you and hello 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 (laughs) if it's your first time here hello it's me Robin I'm so happy to meet you so gorgeous friend how's the weather in your heart today how are you doing are you being gentle with yourself are you making space for receiving your needs honoring what you need, taking care of you, being sweet to you. I hope so. It's a very interesting thing to realize that not always are you in control of your emotions and your needs, your physical needs, your moods, your, um, you know, you're not always in control. And sometimes You're not where you want to be with things. And when that happens, when that happens, (laughs) I hope that your practice has been to allow some kindness, some gentleness, some love in. I really do. And for some reason, it's making my eyes water to say that. Well, I know the reason because that's been my experience lately that I really have had to practice allowing me to be where I'm actually at. A lot of resistance lately to that, you know. So, yes, over here, the weather in my heart is good. I feel somehow like I've turned another page on my own journey. And that is such a beautiful feeling. You know, um, acceptance has been a huge word Surrender has been another huge word. And those of us meeting together daily at Morning Magic, and you are invited. The details are below 9 a.m. Chicago time, Instagram, Robin Hallett. Those are the details there. (laughs) Come find me. I'm there every day. A beautiful group of friends. We gather, and it's been life changing. So a lot of times we talk about acceptance and receiving and surrender. And, you know, this energy is happening for me as well. And I am feeling the most easy in my heart than I have since this whole pandemic began. And maybe even before, you know. Um, It's amazing how things how things roll. So it's a beautiful day. I'm recording on a Saturday. 
you know, the construction dudes next door, they're building a house next door and they hammer um, <laughs> all day long. We had a healing circle here and it was like so silent. And then they returned from their lunch break and it was like bang, 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 <laughs> bang, bang, bang. So I'm recording on Saturday and just going to roll with it. It's nice and beautiful out. Gentle breeze. I can hear that crickety sound. I love the cricket sounds. Not such a fan of the cicada noise, but I love the cricket sound. So I don't know how that happens, that they're already cricketing and it's only like 4 p.m. But beautiful. I love I love that sound. So did you bring a cup of yum yum with you? Something to cheers me with. I should be sipping some champagne or something for episode 100. But I have my traditional Earl Grey, my favorite tea, Earl Grey with a little stevia and sea salt. We've been cheersing each other for 100 episodes. So this one goes out to us, to me and to you. Thank you for riding with me. Thank you for showing up for yourself. Thank you for, it's 555 on the recording, you guys. Whoa. (laughs) Thank you for being somebody who is willing to practice and show up. And yeah, I love us. I dig us. So cheers. Oh my goodness. This is hilarious. I can't find my tea. I'm looking on my desk. It's totally gone. All right. Hang on a second. Yikes. You know, can I just say this? Episode 100 should not be a big deal. But for some reason, I'm nervous today. (laughs) Okay. Hold on. Okay. I'm back. (laughs) Found it. Cheers. So good. Isn't that funny? I've been a little discombobulated today. Do you ever get like this? It's like (sighs) suddenly you have all these things you need to do. I've mowed the lawn. I did two loads of laundry. Then I laid it out on the, I don't have a laundry line outside, but I have like a banister inside that's nice and wide and I can lay things there to air dry. (laughs) And so I did all that. (laughs) Then I made some fresh tea. And then I thought, oh, let me go wash my hair. So then I wash my hair. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so hi, it's me, Robin. Your your friend on the journey who is also at times discombobulated and I go into resistance and procrastination. It happens, you know, but again, no big It's us. We're amazing. And let us enjoy the ride. I've been thinking a lot about how things have changed for me in a 100 episodes. I need to go back and look, but beginning with episode one. Wow. It's amazing. We are right at the two year mark. Like within one week. Episode one aired August 7, 2018. That's amazing. And I don't, I don't want to talk about me and my journey. I want to, I don't want to just talk about me. I want to talk about us. So my invitation to you is if you've been listening for a while, wherever you picked up, do you remember which episode you found me at? Do you remember who told you about the podcast, how you came to this? You know, that was a moment where some kind of grace entered your life. A miracle happened. And change, transformation, healing came to you unbidden in a way, you know, it was, it came into your life to support you, to love you, to encourage you, to remind you, to hug you. 
Are you really thinking about that, please? <laughs> please? Isn't that beautiful? I mean, you're here every week listening for you. And it's changed you. You've learned things. You've healed things. Maybe you shared a letter. Maybe you asked for some support. Maybe you requested a topic. We are a very beautiful community. And we're floating together. You know, we're riding in the ocean on the waves together. So that's my first is just encourage you to take take some time to consider. <laughs> There's your psychic horn honk. Toot toot. Did you hear it? <laughs> That's so funny. Boop boop. Take a little bit of time to receive how far you have come since you and I met. And, you know, if it's your first episode, get ready. Get ready, my friend. If you love it here, I promise you, I can guarantee you, miracles are at work in your life. I've been reflecting on a lot of this today. It took me a long time to get over the fear that I would sound like I was bragging or thinking, saying I'm hot, sh oops, <laughs> hot shift, you know, and I would worry that I would sound like I was full of myself. But really, I, I come here and give my heart to spirit and I ask, speak through me, help me, help me to know. And I think I really, I began doing that somewhere in the 30s, episode 30, or because I was stressing myself the frick out so much about these episodes. And I realize my ego is in the way. My ego is making this so hard. And I have to say a huge thank you to some of you who really have held my hand through that. Um, you know, really been loving and supportive sending messages when I shared stuff like that on the podcast. You say, keep going, keep going. Don't worry, you know, it's been so helpful. So that's one of the things like I got over. It's good to celebrate and it's good to say, I'm proud of the work I do. I'm proud of the work you're doing. I'm proud of the journey we're on. I'm proud of us for showing up every single week and receiving. It's no small thing. So I hope that, you know, we can both celebrate together in this way take some pride in this is something you have participated in and life has gotten better for you your journey has shifted because of it we've learned how to you know stand up and be more courageous we've learned to accept that it's okay to have feelings We've learned how to hopefully open our hearts to spirit, to let ourselves be influenced by spirit, to be open to miracles. So many of you have come to the journey of A Course in Miracles with me. That is gorgeous. You know, just blessings, blessings, blessings. And today, what I really want to do is to talk to us both about receiving the miracles in our lives, receiving, manifesting and receiving have got to an abundance have got to be the most searched for things on the internet. Um, I don't really look at stats and statistics. I tell you what, the minute I start to look at anything like that on the podcast or on my website, on my blog, I just, you, I can't take it. <laughs> I'm too tenderhearted. I cannot take it. I'm starting to cry already. Like I, that feeling of caring about the numbers or whatever, it's very challenging for me. So I don't. 
but I do know in that way that I know (laughs) that those are the topics that are always most popular. Abundance, manifesting, and receiving miracles. Receiving is a different kind of a topic, but we're all interested in how do we call this stuff in. So today I thought we could talk a little bit about it because... I've been sharing this on the Morning Magic Lives that there is no order of difficulty in miracles. This comes from Course in Miracles, Chapter 1. One is not harder or bigger than another. They are all the same. All expressions of love are maximal. That's the first principle of miracles. There are 50 principles, by the way. (laughs) That's the very first one. It's, I think it's one of the most important messages in the whole book, to be honest. And I would say that is true for the author of the book because it comes up over and over and over again in the lessons in many different forms, in the workbook, in the, in the passages. I mean, it just keeps saying it. And, you know, if we could really understand There's no order of difficulty. What we want, we can receive. What we would like to heal can be healed. What we would like to call in or to experience more of, we can do that. We can do that. So always what's in the way is the way that I like to begin for me. Um, And If there are things not occurring in your life the way you would like them to occur. And it could be money, okay? That's something people think they really want um, a lot of money. It could be security. It could be a sense of, a greater sense of power or courage. It could be healing. Some of you have physical stuff going on that you really would like to heal. It could be a sense of just ease and flow. That's always my, you know, grace, ease and flow. It's really important that we understand that we can't, a miracle can't be poured into us if the container, the vessel, meaning us, hi, that's us, the mind, the heart, the energy is filled with other things, filled with other things that are not necessarily even a match to courage or ease or joy or success, you know? There's no order of difficulty in miracles. There's no difference. And it's funny, the course also says it's also there's no such thing as a small upset or a big upset. They're all the same. It's the same thing. It's just energy that we weight things differently. We weigh it differently. There's just energy, though. I mean, I get there's nobody who doesn't fall into the trap of thinking, oh, if you just have a headache, that's, it's a little, it's no big deal. But if you have like a serious issue going on in your head or a tumor or something, it seems like, oh, that is the biggest deal. But actually, the energy, the focus, the concentration, the stories that we tell about these things while they're happening There's really no difference. That really opens me up when I consider that. Like, wow, I'm giving things a heavy weight and importance because I have a bigger story about them. That's really what's happening. So if I come back to this thought that I, I, this practice of I really want to receive And I really want you to receive. I really want us to, for the next hundred episodes, you know, 
to focus on stepping stepping into our gorgeous, beautiful lives, stepping into the stuff we really, really want to be about. And I, I'll say stuff because, you know, you know what you want your life to be about. My prayer is that each of us can begin to identify with great intentionality, purpose, focus, with a presence that is great to identify what we really want and help ourselves to get there. It takes courage to focus on what you want and stay there. I think that for me, the last, this whole two years of podcasting has been the most tenacious courage I've ever had in, in so many ways. Staying present. And those of you who know me here for a long time um, know I talk about it a lot, how hard it is to keep showing up. I get, I get bushwhacked by my, <laughs> is that the funniest word? I get bushwhacked by my own ego. <laughs> I'm like, you should quit. Nobody likes it, you know? So this is me talking to me. This is me talking to you. We need to identify courageously, courageously what we want and put our stake in the ground put our flag in the ground and say, this is what I'm going for. For me, the commitment now is to the healing journey, to offering light and healing. Um, this is something very new that I have decided I'm ready and I've stepped in like I'm committed now. I don't know what that's going to look like or how it's going to mean, but that's my intentional focus now. And I wonder if you have a flag to stick in the ground, to a claim to stake, how do we call that? If you have something you want to go for now, what is it? And then can we decide that we're going to begin to release the things that are not in alignment with that, not in support of that? Anything you want to heal can be healed with this focus and love and dedication to yourself, to your journey. If you've been so plagued with your own thoughts and demons, you know, the thoughts are the demons, really. Worry and anxiety and fear. Identify that now. Draw a big circle around it in your in your mind, so to speak. We were talking about landscapes last week. Draw a big circle around this tendency you do and start to stay focused on how that creeps in. How does that creep in for you? Because it's very easy. Like I said, I started to get nervous about recording the episode and the minute that started happening, I needed to say to myself, hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, come on, come on. You could talk to yourself like that dog that's getting out of the backyard and you're trying to get the dog back before it realizes it's not on a leash and it could just run for 100 yards and there'd be no hope, right? <laughs> like, hey, hey, come on, come on. Get back here. Get back here. Get back here. <laughs> Come on. <clears throat> like right on cue, here comes a motorcycle to whisk me away. <laughs> you know, it's like there's this part of us that wants to run away from showing up, run away from being here and taking up space and allowing ourselves to receive the very thing we want the most. 
I bet for a lot of us that's a sense of purpose and connection. You have to show up for that. And like I said, you got to kind of keep a big circle drawn around the tendencies you have to leave, to quit, to not show up. Resistance is like that. So right as I started doing all those kooky things, I got a lot done today, though. You know, mo the lawn, all the weeds, blowing out the driveway, you know, talking to the neighbors. <laughs> I got a lot done today. Laundry. Oh, I washed all the blouses from the winter time. Do you ever do that? I never do that. I took everything off the hangers <laughs> and took it down to wash. This is what I'm saying. I learned in retrospect, that's me procrastinating, stepping in and receiving my beautiful life, my passion, my joy, my excitement. I love this thing, Tea with Robin. <laughs> I love offering healing. I love it. Are you excited about your stuff that you want to be doing, that you want to call more in for yourself? You know, even if you're healing a physical thing, are you excited about feeling well? Then let yourself be excited. You know, there's such a bizarre thing we do where we push off and procrastinate and resist the very st stuff we want. So, man, I hope I'm making sense today. Um, we need to receive we need to receive. We need to allow ourselves to say, I love this. I love this. I'm so excited. Yay, I get to record today. What would you say? Go on, I'll wait. What are you excited about and what do you call more into? Yay, I get to do this today. You know, I have friends who have to go to the hospital <laughs> My neighbor just turned on their leaf blower, and I'm really hoping it's not too loud for you. <laughs> um, I have friends that have to go to the hospital every week for a checkup again on their diagnosis, how things are going. Uh, number one husband, when he was healing his bladder cancer, we would have to go to the hospital for repeat checkups, repeat treatments weekly for a very long time. And instead of saying, Oh, God, I'm so afraid, which I absolutely get. I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid. It's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. How about, yay, we get to see my, pro my amazing progress. My amazing progress. You know, you know, these are things we can fake until we make it, too. It's okay. But, you know, look at the difference in the energy. If you have an, if you're an artist and you're creating a beautiful course right now, um, so many of you, my friends, are creating art and you're, you have something beautiful to sell, to share, to, and you're excited. This is like your baby. You love it. And then what do you do? You start to, get closer to the launch and you worry over it like it's not the same thing you know you worry over it like it's that dog getting out of the yard and it's not going to behave and things aren't going to go well and you've got to start talking to it in the low voice and making sure it doesn't run away and you have to start controlling it. And that's so much heavy juju, negative energy. What if we kept saying, I love this. I get to do this. I welcome this in. I'm so excited. It's so beautiful. Friends are going to love this. I can't wait to share this with the world. I feel so blessed that I get to do this. If you have a brain tumor right now, this is the same thing I would encourage you to do. If you have a broken leg right now, this is the same thing. If you're out of work now and you don't know how to pay your mortgage, 
I encourage you to find the translation for what I'm saying and practice with me. Each of us has a longing, a thing we want. Can you go for it? Can you let yourself go for it? And love your creation, love your, what you get to do and decide and decide you're going to give your heart to this thing. So back to the principle, there is no order of difficulty in miracles. One is not harder or bigger than another. They are all the same. All expressions of love are maximal. And love in the course is not the romantic love. It's talking about the energy of the creation, the energy of the creator, the energy of the divine. And um, what is a miracle? It's a shift in your perception. It's something that wakes you and opens you and heals you. Miracles are expressions of love. And it, it's an inner shift in your awareness. A change in the way we feel and we think. When I become willing to see my journey differently, so much can open up for me. Now the maximal part is so fascinating to me, means that there is the capacity for the shift to be ginormous or just an itty bitty breadcrumb, just in a, a, a tiny one, but there's a capacity for great big change in us. And so I'll leave you with this. My question is, what is in the way? of what you'd like to be the way of your life. This is such a powerful time during our pandemic, during all the movements, all the awareness. If you're in the States, the most bizarre political everything going on um, overseas, there's a lot happening too. You know, all around the world, things are shaking and awakening and it's as if the cosmic posse guiding and leading us is saying, I want you to do this. I want you to awaken. I want you to step in. I'm, I need you to be awake. I need you to be here in your power, helping, making a difference as a teacher in the way that you feel called to teach. And each of you is called to teach. Each of you is called to teach. So wherever this resonated for you today, I invite you to consider what do I really need to release? What can I draw a big circle around? You know, is it my continual poo poo attitude about what I'm here to do? Is it my self-confidence crap? Is it my bitter unforgiveness toward my mother, my brother, my, my spouse? Is it my continual pity party? Look, none of us is exempt from that. But what we can do is decide, I am going to commit to what I love with power in my heart. I'm going to do this. I'm in for the miracle. <laughs> I'm ready to receive my gorgeous life. So, yeah. Woo! Cheers to another hundred episodes. Cheers to this gorgeous journey we're on. And I got to say, you know, cheers to all the transformation that's happened for you since we began riding together. Cheers. So inspiration today. This is so cool. I, um, I, I talked to a friend of mine the other day, a friend I see for healing sessions. I've known for a long time. And we had this great session. And this energy came through that I wanted to share with you as well. And of course, I asked 
her permission. And she was like, absolutely. You guys are always so amazing because everybody says, absolutely. If it helps somebody else, I want to share. And I love that about us so much. It's so amazing. Like this is how we teach and help one another. So we were talking about how things are in the way. And when, when we're holding a lot, we were talking about receiving before, when we're holding a lot of stuff, that's not really the primary focus of what I would say what we really want to be focusing on, what we want to be about. When we're just carrying a lot of stuff, we tend to be sort of like that ping pong ball or that sort of like that um, pinball in the machine. We're bouncing all over the place. Can't get focused, can't get centered, can't get present. Kind of like what I was saying about before I sat down to record. I was all over the place. And my friend is really working on that. It's it's something that's a bigger tendency. So we sometimes say you're like a hummingbird, you know, flitting from flower to flower to flower to flower to flower. And sometimes what's difficult is I can't stop doing that if I can't purge some of what's been here for me. If I can't really realize for myself what I've been going through, what I've been dealing with, it's really difficult to be an open vessel that, who can receive because we're carrying a lot of stuff. Does that make sense? So as we sat together and focused on it, what came through was a sort of a timeline experience where it's you can do this as a you could do it as an art project you could do it as a art journaling project you could just think about it in your mind my friend any way you want to give yourself some permission to go back over how your journey has been, the things specifically you have been through, what you've been going through. A lot of times people will say to me, nobody knows what I've been dealing with. Nobody knows what I've been going through. And I will say, yes, and that's fine, actually. But do you really get what you've been going through? Because that's the only connection really that matters is, do you deeply receive what you've been going through? Do you get it? Do you know what you've been carrying? So a timeline project, like I say, could be an art journaling, it could be something where you just let yourself draw on a piece of paper a long line and then make little hatch marks that represent events or dates or periods in your life, seasons. And you let yourself explore some of the things that maybe you haven't fully hugged yourself for yet. Some of the things that perhaps you haven't fully celebrated yourself yet, like this milestone, do you know how I actually realized episode 100 is such a big deal? Because my friend Jackie, hi Jackie, mailed me the most gorgeous card in the mail. And there was a, it's really sweet, it's really touching, a $100 bill in the envelope. And she said, that's $1 for every episode you have done. And um, the thing, Jackie, you didn't know is that's exactly how my grandma and grandpa used to send money to me. And <laughs> yesterday I was driving in the car and I saw their car. They had a convertible Buick. I forget what the color was. So I was driving just quick to pick something up at the store, like a uh, curbside delivery. I haven't been in the stores yet, you guys. 
call me chicken. It's okay. So I pull up next to this 1971 Buick Skylark convertible. And I'm like, oh my God, that was my grandma and grandpa's car. And I was just thinking about grandpa and how he was always so generous and would do things like that, you know, $1 or probably a quarter for every, every A, you know, that feeling of love coming over me. And then I looked in front of me and the car in front of me had the plate Nibor 69. Well, sometimes my grandpa would tease me, Nibor, would call me Nibor. That's Robin spelled backwards, by the way. And that's the year I was born, 1969. How does that happen? It's called a miracle. (laughs) So then I get home and there's a package there addressed to Robin Lovejoy Hallelujah Hallett from Miss Jackie. And it is the same love and encouragement and kindness and specialness and sweetness. It's so beautiful and special. Already seeing the car and then the license plate and all of that, but it wasn't until that extra step of the $1 for every episode, which is exactly, it's so meaningful, you know? Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope you love that story sitting here feeling like that's how it really impressed itself upon me. It's a big deal. Body of work, you know, a body of work, a hundred episodes. I just, wow. So the timeline helps you to create that wow for yourself, because sometimes we just take it for granted. We're in these bodies, we're living these lives, and we're not getting it. You know what I mean? So that's my big inspiration for you this week. Let yourself have a timeline. You know, go back six months, go back six years, do what feels right for you and really honor and celebrate. And it could be really fun when you get to certain areas that you're like, wow, let me explore this further. Maybe you will create some art around that. And I had told my friend that at, at, as we were sitting together, sometimes I get visions and um, things I, I feel called to share. So I said to her, there is a book by Diane Keaton who wrote, um, then again, it's a memoir, but it's really about her mother's journey. And her mother was a great journaler, a keeper of stories, and she would do these art journals and cut things out and paste them together and write little stories in the journal. And I, that visual came up for me and I shared this with my friend and now I'm sharing it with you. Like, how can you take your life and make it something where you can look back and say, wow, you know, have you healed something amazing? I look at number one husband who healed his cancer and You know, that would be a beautiful timeline to to look at and celebrate. And it gives you something when you're done. So I hope that inspires you to try something like that. It would be so beautiful. If you wanted to take it another step, do a body tracing as your timeline. I've talked about that here in other episodes. Let's go for it. Let's have fun. And I I can't wait to see what you do because I do love when you share with me. And you have my email address, don't you? It's hello at robinhallett.com or you can always message me on Instagram or Facebook. Okay, all the deets are below and also the show notes are over at robinhallett.com slash 100. How do I love saying that? 100. I can't, I just, wow. What are we going to, am I just going to say 101? And 111, I don't know. It's just so fun. 111 and 100. Proud of myself. Cheers. Okay. I have a beautiful letter 
to share today. And before I do that, I would love to ask you to support the podcast. Maybe let's do something fun and different this week. I always ask you to share it, tell a friend, write a review, make a donation. You know, I would love to hear a story. I'd love to hear something about what you have learned about yourself in this journey since you've been listening. If you're a, if this is something you love to do, if this is a favorite podcast, some of you actually say that's your favorite podcast. I would love to hear your story. I always post on uh, Mondays, the podcast episode release on Facebook and Instagram. Share a little something. That's what I would love. If I could be so bold and ask, that's that would make me so happy to know how things have changed for you since you became a listener, a loyal listener. <laughs> and I thank you so much for that. And it's totally cool if you don't. I'll love you anyway, I promise. Okay? All right. So this week's letter, we have an awesome letter. This goes out to my friend, Melanie. And this is one many, many, many of us are going to relate to. So I like to always say this little disclaimer that when one person offers a question, it's an opportunity for each of us to sit in spacious presence with our own hearts and receive what is here for us. If the topic isn't exactly your topic, then convert what I'm saying to what fits for you healing, wisdom, you know, universal love. It's universal. It applies universally. <laughs> so this is never just for the questioner. Well, you'll hear. Just want to say this is for us all. And thank you so much, Melanie. She writes, my most beautiful friend, Robin, thank you for your devotion. Thank you for seeing it through. You teach me so much. Congratulations from the bottom of my heart on episode 100. How do you know what to stick to? Is there a certain path? Does it matter? I have danced down many different paths in my entrepreneurial journey. Honestly, I am to the point where I don't even know if I want a business. But that also feels like a cop-out. I have a feeling that these thoughts are all tied to what it means to be successful in a business. The world's version versus my own. Maybe that's a good place to start. I guess my main question is, even through the doubts, which can just feel overwhelming at times, how do you know what to stick with? Melanie, thank you so much for that beautiful letter. Just as I looked up, just right now, right now, a mama woodpecker is visiting her babies in the tree right outside this window. Love. I see the little cheap, cheap birdies asking to be fed. And the mother has returned again with a worm or a bugly. <laughs> She's feeding her babies. This feels like a sign for you, my friend. Wow, it's so beautiful. There's a hole in the tree. There's a hole in the tree and every year somebody moves in. One year it was a squirrel. One year I remember robins. This year it's a woodpecker family. And that feels like something just happened for you, just for you. But it's also perfect timing for what I was seeing while I was reading your letter. And that is the process of manifestation, the process of calling forth from the beyond. You know how we set an intention and call something forward. And I'll call that the void today. Um, when we're in the unknown, when we don't know, when we're in our small self sometimes, 
and we're not sure what we should do or what we want to do. I feel sometimes that our deepest work is to really learn to remember the void, remember that empty space, remember that nest that's there and sort of call to our to our memory, call to our knowing that there's a process where we call things forward with our energy and our intention because we co-create with the divine. I hope that makes sense. So <laughs> just seeing that nest is perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. It feels to me so strongly like what if we had permission to look into the void, look into the void, the absence of knowing is a void with excitement and delightment, delightment and excitement, understanding I am the one witnessing this place, you know, I am this one, this faithful one who is here understanding that I am always creating and what comes through that void. You could think of it as a stargate. You could think of it as the big open expanse of sky before the moon appears at night or the space before a star is born. I do believe our deepest work is to honor the void and to understand that we are the ones who decide what's inside there and what's coming through the gate, what's coming through there. And that's our work, is to tend to the nest, knowing something sacred is inside and coming forth, that we always have a part in creating and calling forth. I love how you ask, how do you know what to stick to? Is there a certain path and does it matter? I suppose it doesn't. What matters is that we continue to understand our dance with the divine, our ability to call things forth, to create and it's so much more important. How do we want to feel? How do we want to ride? How do we want to energetically flow with this void or this stargate? I like the stargate imagery. That screen feels so much more important to be focused on. That energy feels so much more important to be sitting on, sitting with. I love how you said, I've danced down many different paths in my entrepreneurial journey. For anyone else listening to that who has done the same, and I raise my hand, I've tried many, many different iterations of a healing practice and a healing, offer, different offerings. And at the heart of it all, I was always offering a remembrance of self. I was always offering healing. I was always offering light. And some of it was through such a difficult, challenging lens because I hadn't really been clear. And so I went down some of those paths that experts advise you to try and this and that, you know, and it's like, it was so much harder so you teach this class and you're doing all these things that are really, really difficult and technical, or you can just sit down and have spacious presence with the group and do the same thing. <laughs> That's where I'm at today. For anyone who can relate to that, let's, you know, let us say a huge thank you and a blessing to all the different paths, all the different walks. Thank you, thank you, thank you, because they all taught us things. We learned so much and we grew from that. And also 
we impacted other people in beautiful ways that opened them as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Just in case anybody might be carrying feelings around that, feelings of shame or embarrassment or self-judgment. Sometimes people will say to me, I still haven't found what I'm looking for, you know? And all we can do is say thank you because it's all part of the journey and it's all beautiful actually. All along, we're really interacting with that void, with that, the energy of manifesting, the energy of creation and our own stories about how it needs to be, how it needs to look, how it should go, are impacting that. So as we distill down even more, what is my great love? How do I want to spend my time? How do I want to interact? How would I want this to flow? There's so much more there then. If I really step back and understand that I am part of this creation process and I'm in charge of how this flow is going, it really changes it. (sighs) I can see right now the woodpecker babies. Right now they're poking up out of the nest looking. (laughs) So I love that. I've danced down many different paths in my entrepreneurial journey. I think a lot of us have. And my question is, are any of us carrying any shame or embarrassment or sense of failure around those ones? In this moment, my new awakening is, wow, I was always faithful to the healing journey, though. So if any of us think back on what you used to do and how it used to be, and you feel any sense of embarrassment or shame or sadness look, let's check that stuff. Let's release that stuff. Let's put that on a timeline. Let's journal that out. Let's get a deeper understanding. You have always been showing up courageously. You've always been showing up on your journey. You've always been dedicated. And sometimes it's okay to say I wasn't as awake in my own heart as I am right now. Thank you for that. Thank you for the knowing. Sometimes people will say to me, you have changed so much. And it it took me a while to get to the place where I could hear that as a total compliment. And now I do. I really, really appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? So we were talking about how we've done a lot of things in the past. We've tried a lot of things. And here we are now. You're saying you don't need, you're at the point where you don't even know if you want a business But at the same time, it feels like a cop out. And I so get what you mean by business and being successful in a business, which is, yeah, the world's version, the world's version and all the marketing stuff that goes with that and all the pressure and it looks a certain way and it's not for us, period. Period, period, period. It is not for us. The minute we step into that knowing is the first day we experience freedom like we've never had it before. Just to know that our journey is one that is led by spirit. Years ago, I wrote a post um, for Lightworker Love. This is this course. I finally decided when I was ready to really stop listening to traditional advice and freak myself out and you know all that the phallic journey I used to call it you know where you're just trying to rise (laughs) all the time no not for me so when I started creating light work or love I started writing about this and what is true for me what is real for me and it's like yeah you know God is the CEO of anything I'm doing, the social media manager, the the coordinator, the course writer. Um, I am doing what I can to listen to that voice of spirit. And that is that unmanifest potential, that energy that's there, 
that is the energy of God. And it's like, how can I just be faithful to that and call that, call that in me, that creative energy in me and align it with, I don't need to worry about what to do, what to say, how to be, how to roll. I don't. I have to faithfully show up. I do have to know how I want to feel in my day. You know, I love the Course in Miracles, the rules for decision, where it says, in the morning, when you get up, let yourself feel into how you want this day to flow. And this could be the same thing we do for our, see me doing air quotes here, business, for our endeavors that in exchange for pay, or doesn't even have to be for pay, does it? It's just like, this is what I do. This is what I'm doing right now. I'm here. <gasps> that is a hawk with a wingspan. Like, I don't even know. I mean, it almost looks like it was a white owl. I'm actually looking at. There are things happening here I have never seen before, my friend. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And a team of sparrows were escorting this hawk slash owl off our property. It really looked too light bodied to be a hawk, like white. Pardon me, friends. I can see this bird. So, so cool. So let's just keep all of this in mind that's happening right now. You know, the way the energy of spirit dances with us is very different than the linear world and how business and all these other things go together. But I was saying light worker love, I decided I'm going to start really talking about what I know and what's in my heart instead of listening to popular advice and following business gurus and teachers in that way. Um, I'm grateful for the time I did all of that other stuff because I do feel like I have a certain knowledge that helps me in healing work that I do with people who are on that path and you, we run into a lot of suffering on that path you know and so I feel like I understand what's going on there you know but the point is what we care about the most is the delight in our hearts and that rules for decision is like feel into how you want the day to go feel into how it feels to be you offering something in the world Feel how you feel when you imagine yourself being of service or being of, insert your word here, my friend, in a day, in a life, in a week, in a month, just for now. It always feels like just for now is a really powerful thing to claim. Permission to keep evolve that um, portal portal there's my word the portal would be how the portal would be you don't know what's coming through the portal but let's maintain the portal let's finally that word portal I'm looking at this hole in the tree and I'm thinking it's like a, a void it's like a hole it's like a, it's a portal that's the word thank you portal that's what I need to work on is maintaining the portal, the understanding that I'm always creating and calling to me what I am focusing on. So that's really my passion is the portal itself, you know, the ability. So in the rules for decision, it keeps taking us back through that. Like you've already said how you want it to be. Now your job is to respond to what comes through the portal don't think about it, don't over critique it, don't strategize it, and don't lose the tether to me. Because you and I ride together, spirit and you, I'm saying, you know. And so if you get into this, he the heavies and the struggles, like I can, sometimes I can really overthink things and get very worried about stuff. And then I'm like quitting everything in my mind. Right there in the rules for decision, it says, today I will make no decisions by myself. So we, we do get to 
to claim how we want to feel, how we want to roll in the day, how the energetic vibe. So some of you will say, I want to feel peaceful. I want to feel energized. I want to feel delighted. I want to feel I am of I'm serving. I want to feel alive. I want to feel excited, you know. It says take some time to really sink in that feeling. Meditate on it. Offer it up. You know, this is how I want to serve. This is how I want to be. And then it's like I'm not going to make any decisions by myself. And the line that is it hits me every time. I read this almost every day right now. It says, this is your major problem now. And again, you guys, I'm not just talking to Melanie. I'm talking to all of us. I hope that's clear. <laughs> this is your major problem now. You still make up your mind and then you decide to ask me what you should do. <laughs> is that not the truth? It's like, I'm, I've decided I'm going to make up my own mind. That's how I have rolled for the longest time. And that's where the suffering comes from. I make up my own mind. But it says, if I make no decisions by myself, this is the day that will be given to me. You know? If I, if I ride in the flow, this is how it's going to go for me. If I just do stake my claim, like I said at the beginning... I want to feel this way in my day. I want to know I'm on point. I have to ask my own heart what on point looks like for me. And then I'm going to mind the portal. I'm going to mind what's coming through, what the what the guidance is for me in the moment. And I'm going to follow that guidance. I'm going to remember, let me not decide all by myself in my tiny ego mind. I'm going to keep staying in the expansiveness of everything is possible. Miracles are always occurring. You know, all expressions of love are maximal. I can do anything and everything when I can really surrender my ideas and my plans, the biggest version of myself serving in the world can happen. And that's where I come to for you, my friend. Your last line here, even through the doubts, which can just feel so overwhelming at times, how do you know what to stick with? So what we stick with, in my heart, it's the commitment to honor the light. What if we knew that? And we continued to release things like doubts, you know, the doubts are the thing we, we all need to start recognizing. This is what I'm going to allow my ego to do to keep me from my goal. And my goal is expanding, rising, serving. I know who I am in truth. Like Paul Selig would say, I know what I am in truth. And I know how I serve in truth. I am free. I have come. I am here. He has lots of different ways. I am here. I have come, I have come, I have come. And how do we serve? By being us. So what we stick with, in my heart, it's the commitment to honor the light. In us, in that portal, that calling forth. And keeping the mind screen clear, keeping the doubts and all of that chaos clear. And continuing to have a lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Do you know that song? Yeah. When I wake up in the morning, love. And the sunlight hurts my eyes. And something without warning, love, bears heavy on my mind. Then I look at you. And the world's all right with me. Just one look at you, and I know it's going to be a lovely day. <laughs> lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day. We're talking about spirit here in my mind. That's a song by Bill Withers, by the way. Wow. 
It is so amazing sometimes how simple things are, you know? What do we stick with? What do we honor? We honor the divine in us. We honor the divine. And we go about our lovely day. And it doesn't really matter what we're working on, if we're even working. If we're keeping ourselves clear, our minds clear, and we have that focus, the divine speaks to you through the portal and you answer the call. And how you're serving is being yourself and honoring your own flow. And what lights you up, what excites you, is very honoring of the creative flow of the universe. So thank you for such a beautiful question. I hope something here has been an aha. (laughs) It's certainly delightful. I just peeked in our hawk. She's still sitting on the branch. Wow, amazing, amazing. Talk about some good juju. And friends, I love to answer your letters here. Write to me, hello at robinhallett.com or you can message me through the show notes here. Well, friends, wow, here we are. Episode 100 in the can. I think we are going to celebrate tonight. Maybe a little bubbly and a pizza. Does that sound good to you? It sounds really good to me. Let us not forget the lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. You are lovely. Here's to all the beautiful heart work we have done together, all the journeying we have shared over the last 100 episodes. And please don't go back to one and listen. I I don't want to (laughs) know. Let's just be here now. I have a feeling we've all grown together so much. I don't even want to hear it, you know. (laughs) Um, But I celebrate all of it. And I'm thankful for all of it. And I'm thankful for you and all of it. And here's to the next 100. And everything is possible for us, my friends. Let us remember. Thanks for riding with me. And I'm going to see you on the next episode (laughs) next week or in a few minutes. This is me, Robin. Hallelujah. Love, joy, heart sparkler. Who loves you, baby? Hallett. See you next time. is very short let's make the very most of it you are a precious gem and i love you do 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 we are here to shine and shine bright you are a gem and i love you do 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 life is precious and you are a spark of the divine so shine like you know it rock it like you mean it cause you really really mean it and mean it and mean it and mean it and mean it don't let crispy people tell you that you aren't sparkly cause you are cause you are cause you are thank you